Holy cow, tree, 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 tree. <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, this is incredible! All right, so friends, we have a really exciting day here. Uh, we're gonna be taking our 12 motor iron vulture, and we're gonna be adding two thruster motors and ultimately taking it outside. And if you guys aren't familiar with what we've been doing, we're basically making a recreation of the iron vulture, which was a classic cartoon called Tailspin. We're gonna be recreating this. This has 12 motors, has two big thrusters on the back, and planes are able to land both on top of it and also inside of it. What we've done so far is we basically built kind of like an analog frame here so we can get the motor placement where we want and we can start working on the tune to get it to hover properly. Now we got some successful hovers, but we need to do a lot of work here to get it to hover a little bit better inside. And if all that works, we're gonna be taking it outside for its first flights to see how it not only hovers, but also how it flies through the air. We don't want something just to stick in the air in one spot. We want this to be moving like a big flying battleship. And while I'm working on that, my good friend David's gonna be designing the front beak that opens and closes and making that in small scale so eventually we can blow it up and build it big. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, gyros off or the self-leveling off for now. All right, we're just gonna start with a turn it on. You guys clear? It's safe to say we are on the home stretch here. We had success. I talked originally about an H8 and then an H6. Guess what? It's a quadcopter X. And the way we did this and kind of overcame this finally was by wiring these three motors together, these three motors together, these three motors together, and these three. So each one of the signals is thinking it's talking to one motor, it's actually talking to three. I think this is very similar to what Google Wing uses, but we are finally having success in both yaw, pitch, and the stability we need. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue tuning this. That's something that we can just do over many, many flights. But now I'm gonna start putting my attention towards the thrusters to make it go forwards, possibly even backwards. Okay, I'm just about wrapped up with the Iron Vulture here. Um, I basically just looked up a bunch of pictures of it and worked off of that in Fusion 360 and designed the whole nose here. And from there, I just took it into a draw program, kind of sliced it up and made everything fit together real nice. We're gonna cut it out and get it put together and see how it looks. So last week we got the PID-2 to the adjusted where it was really flying nice indoors here. One thing I definitely noticed is down low the amount of turbulence you get kind of washing back and bouncing back is very similar to what you see with most multi-rotors and also helicopters. As we took it up higher, it got even more stable. At this point, I'm ready to take this out for a hover test, but before I do, I want to work on the thrusters. Uh, in the movie Tailspin, there is two iconic huge motors that would actually propel it through the air. It wasn't like a multi-rotor where it tipped its nose down and drove through the air. I want this to look like a legitimate ship soaring through the air just like it was in the cartoon. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding two different thrusters. And for right now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to use my TX-16 and I'm going to use a slider because as I fly this, I can use a slider to get different speeds right from here. The next steps are pretty simple. I'm going to attach a couple motors in the back, do some mixing. Then I think we're going to take it outside for a test. All right, guys, obviously I'm here at my house because today's sponsor of this episode is our friends over at Bear Mattress. All right, so if you've never heard of Bear Mattress before, they're a company that offers premium mattresses that not only upgrade your sleep, your overall style of life, uh, your quality of life, but also they ship the mattress directly to your door for free. So I think the coolest thing about Bear Mattress is actually they have this sleep quiz that you take. It essentially matches you to the perfect type of mattress based on your preferences, your sleeping habits, etc. All right, so after taking the quiz, I was actually paired with the Elite Hybrid Bear Mattress, and I also got to choose the density of the mattress, which ended up being the medium firmness. So one of the big things I look at are like a bunch of reviews and all that kind of stuff. Well, obviously this has a great review, not only the firmness and how it works with your body, but also one of the things that I really loved about it was I get hot at night and they had this cooling technology. It's fantastic. So it's pretty simple. They ship it directly to your door for free. You get the box, you open the box, you unroll the mattress, and then you cut it out of the packaging and it goes, fills up, fluffs up, and it's ready to go. Also, when you're making a mattress purchase, you're kind of like worried, like, oh, am I gonna like this, am I not? 
Well, they have a 120 night sleep guarantee that if you're not liking it over that period of time, you can just ship it on back. Along with that sleep trial, you also have a lifetime warranty guarantee as well as financing available and flexible payment plans. So once again, huge thanks to Bear Mattress for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you check out the link in the description below or go to bearmattress.com and put in the code that's in the description to get 30% off your mattress purchase. All right, so now that I'm all rusted up, I gotta go talk to Josh and Dave to see how this iron vulture is coming. Let's go. Hey Josh, guess what? <laughs> You're done. I got your nose. Oh my gosh, you got my nose already. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah, so I, I drew this up in Fusion, small scale. Um, basically unfolded it all and figured out the dimensions and then did it in foam board. Yeah. And this is what we came up with. How big is it actually gonna be? So it's gonna be bigger than this here. Uh, basically this piece uh, is 18 inches. When we scale up the size of the 18 and a half foot iron vulture, this is gonna become four feet long. Wow. And the neat thing is it's gonna be two feet wide. So 24 inches wide. That's awesome. So the really cool thing about what Dave just designed here is the Iron Vulture is pretty unique because planes won't just land on top of the Iron Vulture, they actually fly right inside the mouth. With this being four feet by 24 inches wide, I think we'll be able to actually fly things inside the mouth. Oh, that's gonna be and awesome. Do you think you can make basically a way to open up the mouth? Oh, definitely, movies? definitely. Perfect. Well, this is awesome. I'm not really uh, gonna need this for a short season. What we gotta do now is we gotta take out the big monster here with some thrusters and see how it flies forward. Awesome, let's do it. You like my wire job, Dave? Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I just can't wait to have one unplugged thing and we have to chase it down. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. So, we got everything hooked up. Let's get this razor blade out of here. We got everything hooked up here. We have five cell, 5,000 milliamp batteries on the very back, but because there's so much weight on the back, we gotta counteract that. So we moved all the other batteries as far forward as possible. Dave, could you grab it right here? Just put your finger right in. Problem is, if you have a quad or a multi-rotor that doesn't balance even, these motors are gonna have to do a lot more work. The more work they do, the less threshold they have if you wanna pitch forward or roll, they'll max out, and then they won't give you any more stabilization or more power, and that causes really bad things to happen. So, uh, let's just add weight to get it there, and that way we'll know if, you know, yeah. what yeah, the total weight is. Uh, uh, knowing how much of a lift, too. There you go. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go here. We gotta get this thing out to the field. Lee? Sir, yes, sir. Can we strap this to the top of your uh, diamond back? Absolutely. Awesome, you wanna pull it around? We'll just take this out through the double doors. We haven't really measured this to make sure it can get through the double doors. That'll be our next question that we need to answer, but. It'll be fun either way. Yeah, grab some straps, we'll Let's need them. Let's do it. This is ridiculously light. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys ever need anything to uh, carry a giant quad, Diamondback's the way to go. Yeah. As far as I go. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Please tip your Uber well. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Diamondback. One of the more covered. unconventional things, huh? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. That was All right. Simple. So we're gonna throw some batteries on it. Do a last weight and balance. Wind's blowing a little bit. Hopefully it won't be too much. We're gonna put up and see what happens. Oh, that part's too loud. I'm optimistic. I mean, it, it hovered better than most of the other things that we've had that are big and sketchy. Especially, it definitely hovered better than the, uh, than dirigible. the uh, dirigible, yeah. Sorry about that. Paying the bills. But uh, I agree, I think there's gonna be moments of drama, especially, yeah, I don't know what wind's gonna do to it. Yeah, or anything, you never so. know. Well, one way to find out. We're gonna do that now. Gonna do it now. Predictions. All right, my prediction is this, that uh, the amount of electronics on this beast uh, are all going to s just sync up perfectly and it's gonna just float and it's gonna do exactly what he wants it to do. Do you even watch our shows? <laughs> I, I think that, that there'll be... <laughs> It'll get up, but there's gonna be some instability, and you're moving forward too, right? Yeah, I'm gonna first start with like just a hover, you uh -huh. know, get it up like 15 feet, because we haven't been able to do that in the shop. Yeah. Make sure it feels good, and then once that feels good, I'll either land it, or I'll just slide this forward. And I got differential on this switch. This is my, my forward right here, and then we'll we'll take it around. I, I think the, I mean, just from watching the, the Zeppelin and remembering the Zeppelin video, there's gonna be a few, Quirks and drama. 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 
So every time I use the Radio Master, I fall more in love with it. I was intimidated about doing the differential thrust. I can actually program differential thrust on this faster than I can with the Spectrum, which says a lot. But also I can assign the dual rates and expo specifically to that mix, even though it's using the same reference as rudder, which is huge because I want this as much torque as possible for the rudder, but I want to dial this one down. I was able to do that with this click of a switch. It's pretty cool. And, uh... All right, so you can go any way but this way. Yeah, you'll be all right. Okay, well that's why we didn't go to EcoFlow. We're at Adam's Ready Board Runway because the wind is blowing this way. If we went to EcoFlow and the second we'd hover it, it would immediately drift into us. So we can just kind of push that way. Stephen, you get the flute. You shouldn't be too muddy. Come here, pooch. All right, we care about people and dogs. There you go. Hello, I love baby. this. This is, this is our safety, by the way. Moose, look to the right, or just pan to the right here. This is, this is how much we care about safety. The plane is there. There's a wall of humans. Yes. All right, all right. Here we go. And I'm holding a dog. <laughs> All right, you got that? Hey. All right, level assist going. Three, two, one. What's up? All right, looks good. Rough in the air. Very stable. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Whoa! What is going on? Oh, wow. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Are they okay. still going? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. That was awesome! That was amazing! <laughs> So I think I think the motors are pitching you up in the, from the back. That was right? like I just gave like quarter <laughs> throttle. It was like whoosh. <laughs> All right, now that we know, we're gonna have to definitely dial down the rates of this thing called forward. Let's try it one more time here. How's your thumbs feeling? <laughs> think you're this shaking. Let me just make sure I still have oh hover. My goodness. Hover is nice. <laughs> That hover looks solid. All right, now there we have just go. a quarter. There it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a, like a jet, man, for the first time. Come on. Y'all, it's not working very well. Oh. Oh, Lander. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think you lost the motor. I you think you lost something. Yeah, there's a motor <laughs> hanging off and a camera. All right, wow. Okay, well, <laughs> we definitely have no problem. I, I could have turned that thing like this and just gone like that, but then the motor's like, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to, oh my God, I just thought about it. Level assist. Oh. We can't put it in level assist. That so, makes perfect sense. All right, let's see if, if we have, okay. There's so definitely here, a monster hanging off. Okay, we got to read little monster, but here's what most likely happened. I didn't even think about this. We got to fly this on acro or dumb down level assist because Everything worked fine as I was pitching, but the second I went back to neutral stick, it was fighting basically the, the push back and pull forward. So it was, it was, am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Like uh, basically when the motors are pushing in the back, it wants to tip it up like that. Yeah. And the gyros are trying to counteract that. Yeah. But in doing so, it's also losing altitude, which means it's trying to pop back up to correct that. It's chasing it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll glue the motors back on. We'll give it a round two. Awesome. <laughs> that was all, awesome. hey, that's nice. High, high Holy job. cow. Yeah, that's that's not repeatable. Let's go check that out. We're gonna go for round two. Uh, we're kind of speculating that it was because of the level assist mode or horizon or angle, whatever they call it on this one, but the desire to bring it back to level. This time I'm gonna fly it in acro mode, which means it's gonna be more like a normal drone. First thing I'm gonna take it up, see how it hovers. Hopefully everything is good. If so, I'm gonna take it up really high this time. And, Have some uh, fun with it and <laughs> see what it'll do. Put one way or another, it's gonna fly, <laughs> so. All right. All right, uh, let's take a couple steps this yeah. way. Yeah. We'll get Lee to protect you. All right, there ready? All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Much more stable. Da, 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 da. You can hear all that resonation through everything too. Oh jeez. So, <laughs> what are you feeling, Dave Biggs? 
It's working. Yeah, it looks it? great, huh? <laughs> you just gotta use very, very minimal throttle. But that's it, look, it's flat, it's moving forward. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy looking. I'll go a little bit higher throttle, see what happens. Ready, into the wind. Yeah, you're right, Dave. Every time I give throttle, it's like... Yeah, it pushes the front up. It's almost like the back wants to there it is. swing. Yeah, I was gonna say, try giving it some forward. You wanna see a climb, ready? Three, two, one. Uh, that's not climbing. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Holy Whoa. cow, tree, 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 tree. Oh. Oh, nope, you're good. Oh, you're good. Oh. <laughs> there was a moment in there where I thought it was just gonna be a rocket ship and all of a sudden the motor's like, forget you, I'm out of here. <laughs> Got out of there in a hurry. Yeah, there's still some pieces of it left, but I would say acro for sure. Yes, yes. Very, very, very minimal thrust. We don't need a lot of thrust because when there's too much thrust, bad things happen. But that's okay because this thing wasn't rocking into the air. It just, we just want to be able to hold it. Yeah, well, it's a blimp. So in yeah. theory, it should just be kind of nice and cruising. Totally, you know. totally. When I, was, when I was flying this, I had maybe quarter throttle. And even with this wind, it was able to penetrate no problem. Anytime I went over third throttle, it was a little bit like, what are you pulling here, bud? So. <laughs> All right, well, let's go pick up the pieces and see what we got to do next. Definitely. I think we got what we need to know, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We learned a lot from this. Yeah. And uh, I think we know what to do to go forward. We definitely know it'll fly. We definitely know where we need to go now with less power going forward. We don't need all that power. And, uh, and we got good, stable, easy flight. Uh, but now we got to figure out how that thrust is going to work around the airframe, right? Right, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think once we start adding the body to this thing, it's going to be a way different animal. Yeah, and we definitely need more power. So I think we're going to go right from the, the budget Bs up to our XL motors, our 2814s. That should give us about 60 pounds of thrust going up at full throttle. Uh, right now, this is maybe about 20 pounds. Yeah, I'd say somewhere around 20 yeah, pounds. About 20 pounds. We got 10 pounds of motor, and that's maybe 10 pounds here. Uh, we need to have this where it'll easily fly, but also we can have planes land and things land on top of it. So uh, we got a lot of work to do. Make sure you hit the subscribe bell. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Dr. Mac.